And we are live again this week um, at SEO Career Mastery. We have on Ash New, the Senior SEO Manager at Virgin Media O2. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We are so excited to be chatting to you um, about the industry and your career journey um, and all things SEO um, and SEO manager wise. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to kick things off quickly by um, asking you, Ash, if uh, you could just quickly take us through a little bit of your backstory, how you got into SEO, and I guess um, leading up to where you are now in your role. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'll try not to be too long- long-winded, but yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, so yeah, I guess I started out, studied a marketing degree, because as you do, you're kind of like, oh, I'll go into business. I've always been (laughs) digitally focused. I always worked on like different projects when I was like younger, like websites and that kind of stuff. But to be honest, like didn't really know what SEO was for a long time. Um, When I came out of uni, I knew that I wanted to combine my interest in tech and digital with marketing. So digital marketing was the kind of obvious corner for me to go to. Um, Went into a grad role, worked in quite a general digital marketing role, um, worked on different like we built a new e-commerce uh, website at the time, rebranded, all that kind of stuff. Um, they um, pushed me into more like CRM, segmentation, email, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I learned a lot about that, did that for a couple of years. But it didn't really, I wasn't passionate about it, didn't love it, to be honest. Um, uh, ended up kind of at that stage in your life when I was in sort of early 20s being like right I need to go traveling it's now or never sort of thing so took a year out went traveling um did a bit of freelance work on the side um for my brother's company which is a similar brand to you guys it's a recruitment company um working in more like the AI and data space though so it was kind of quite an interesting okay. area um so that was really interesting um but then when I came back he was like look I need someone to do my marketing and I was and like build me a website all that kind of stuff uh, and I was at a stage where I was like, I don't have a job, so that would be great. Um, so <laughs> I ended up working there for quite a while because I just we had a really good time. It was a small startup culture, um, you know, great brand, learned a lot. But, you know, obviously didn't have a huge amount of money um, to spend. So, you know, I was looking at, like, how can I bring traffic into this site? And I was looking at, um, you know, I thought, oh, content marketing, that seems like a really good way to bring people in. So learning about SEO and how to kind of write content. I wasn't, I'm not a writer myself. Uh, I used freelance writers, but I was good at the sort of technical side of things, um, able to kind of optimize the articles. And we had a lot, quite a lot of success doing that. And I was like, this is actually really fun. I quite enjoy this. And then an opportunity arose um, at my friend's agency. Uh, it's like a kind of smallish independent agency um, where there was a sort of SEO specialist role going as an account exec um, and took that on and learned a lot because I was kind of thrown in the deep end very quickly but you kind of get to work across those of different brands um, got to work on some really cool stuff uh, for like a cruise brand and then also for TikTok when we won that account um, and that was all during sort of like the pandemic when it started and it got a bit crazy um and then i switched to another network to a, a more um what are they called the network agencies uh and i worked on o2 when i was there and i was basically kind of given quite a lot of control over the account um had you know people assisting me with the content all that kind of stuff um but i was the primary sort of account manager um and really enjoyed working on the brand um and then when they merged with Virgin Media um, a couple of years ago. They then sell, turn, turn around to the agency and said, oh, we're, we're in-housing all our digital teams, so we're going to cut, cut ties, wow. unfortunately. Um, so then a role kind of popped up, this role, um, which yeah. was basically what I'd been doing in the agency. Um, and so I made that sort of jump across um, into, into this role. Um, yeah. where now I've been kind of doing this for about a year and a half. Um, and it's been really great. Like, it's been quite different, I guess, in lots of ways to what I was doing before. Um, but mm. the same, which also makes it quite weird. Um, so, um, yeah, it's been really, I really enjoy it, working on some really cool projects. Um, and, yeah, just learning a lot about how to kind of d- deliver SEO in an enterprise environment. Mm. Awesome. Excellent. I think the, wa- the one constant thing is that everyone's journey in SEO is so interesting and different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Jay, did you have a question? On I didn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, obviously you've worked in multiple SEO roles and you're in the telecommunications market, as you were saying before, you're uh, O2, you're working for O2, even though we've merged with Virgin Media. Does SEO differ sort of working in telecommunications? Because I know within the UK, there's maybe 
mm. four huge providers and the rest yeah. don't really have a say in it. Does F- SEO differ from anything else you've done before working with another industry? I would say yes. Uh, we're very much in telecoms. We're very much campaign focused because we have mm-hmm. because we have big seasonal campaigns. Like I got the iPhone launch or September. I like yeah. to say what phone it's called, but um, got an iPhone launch coming up, um, which is big. Uh, and we also have you know we recently just did the Samsung Fold and Flip launch. Mm-hmm. Um, we do various different product launches throughout the year, and we try and capture that initial customer demand. And those are early adopters. So you have a lot of that seasonal kind of demand, which is on a cyclical, fairly cyclical, but I guess companies can sometimes just drop a product on us out of nowhere. Um, so you kind of have clear um, processes in place to deliver those. You also have obviously like Black Friday and, and Christmas sales and all that kind of stuff. So there's that seasonal element to it. Um, but then there's massive you know, big projects around digitization and bringing in the future of the brand. So, you know, often a lot of the work that goes on is going on in sort of future projects that you're not going to see for probably two to three years. Um, mm-hmm. So you're kind of developing stuff for the future as well, because um, in enterprise, things happen kind of at a snail pace in some cases. Um, and there's obviously a lot of change that goes on consistently and the evolution of technology and and how complicated it can be across, especially in these types of businesses. Um, so there's lots of different projects that go on um, and that, that makes it quite exciting, um, quite interesting in lots of different ways. I'm sure there's you know similar types of projects that go on in other brands, um, but telecoms is a very fast paced industry as in general, very competitive. Um, and there's a huge amount of investment that goes on in the space that I work in. So it's a great place to be really within the business. And as you were saying, the way it's seasonal, so it's like the SEO team get a bit nervous or ramped up coming into September for iPhone and what is it, February slash March for like the S20 range as well? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. The Samsung stuff, yeah, and Google as well. Um, but it's, it, it's interesting. I guess a lot of it is um, sometimes a bit more of a vanity thing in SEO. But like we, we obviously drive a significant amount of traffic and we see the relationship between the traffic we're driving and sales. Um mm-hmm. But predominantly, we are obviously dependent on our performance. Is is not? It's a very multi-channel impact. You know, if we start doing <laughs> TV advertising, um, then we see big up the uplifts in our performance as well. Um, but also, and how it comes down to sometimes just in how price competitive you are, especially in like a lot yeah. of cost of living crisis. Um, you know, a lot of consumers change their behavior, and because you know you have so much data at your fingertips as well, um, and it's fast moving, and you can see what's happening. At, various points in the year compared to what's happened in previous years you really get an insight into how customer behavior changes as well in the market perfect thanks um, is that something you obviously can track now being in-house compared to agency side you don't really see the full sort of timeline being agency side but do you ever consider going back to either like a startup um, SaaS company where it's a bit quicker i i really like, enjoy working in-house um, because it's very different to agency. In-house, you are, especially as an SEO, um, you, I, f- I just feel you can be so much more effective in-house because you can go and speak to people directly about things and you build relationships with everyone in the business. When you're working agency, you're kind of, there's a barrier to entry through the clients that you work with or, the, or your client manager, I guess, um, the client relationship you have. And that can be a limiting factor in how much stuff you can get delivered. Um, And being an SEO, like, you know, it's, I think one of the joys of the business is of working in SEO is that you can, you know, have one minute I'm speaking to someone in PR, another minute I'm speaking to a dev about X project, another minute I'm speaking to another dev about a completely different project. Um, Another minute I'm like, you know, talking to the content teams or the merchandising teams about, you know, different parts of the website and different processes and the bottlenecks that might be causing issues and, trying to solve those problems as well so that that's what makes it interesting for me and and agency side like you are more i guess you can be strategic which is quite interesting i think but it can be a little bit client dependent and you can't control what clients you have when you're in an agency because you're so dependent on having loads of clients to be a profitable business Mm. awesome yeah Um, Speaking on uh, bottlenecks, <clears throat> is there any, um, I guess, moment that you can pinpoint within the past year or so where um, 
you struggled with a bottleneck as an SEO manager, um, whether it be from within your team internally or managing a client side, um, was there any um, prominent bottlenecks and um, how did you manage to have your team and yourself work through that? Um, I guess the biggest bottlenecks we generally get are we as a team might be quite a large team um, and we are expected to work at quite a large pace, right? And we, we're a very commercial business and therefore we are expected to deliver strong results. And that means that we have to put a lot of pressure to get things into place to deliver those results, right? And that we often are trying to work in systems which maybe don't bode well to working at that sort of pace. Um, and we're dependent on other teams to implement things. So like, we can't just jump into the CMS and start changing things. Like we have to put in requests and they have other requests that they have to deal with. And there's also lots of pressures in the business around you know, different technology challenges and things like that. So that can often be really difficult. I think that it's ultimately about trying to prioritize the work you're doing and, and communicating the benefits. Um, you have to be very commercially astute in a business like this, like in terms of relaying to people, okay, if you do this, we might drive this many clicks, which can lead to this amount of sales, which then helps us hit our targets or X, Y, Z. Um, mm-hmm. And ultimately then we get paid. Uh, so um, so it, 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 does, it does sort of, you do have to be very data led and data focused mm-hmm. to help people to prioritize your work over other stuff. Awesome. Um, you mentioned the size of your team. Do you have like an ideal team structure in your head? If you were to create your own company, what sort of structure you would like your SEO team to have? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we've got a really, really great structure at Virgin Media. Too. We've got, with benefit, we, they, they put a huge amount of investment into um, our division uh, in digital. There's, you know, we have massive digital teams uh, and the SEO division ourselves, sort of, we call it owned and earned because it's sort of covering all of our own earned traffic as well as sort of just the SEO side of things. Um, there's 15 of us and we have, uh, we, I cover sort of the SEO mobile side and we've got counterparts on the cable side, on the Virgin Media side. Um, and we share resources. So we've kind of built our own in-house agency as such. Like we have a tech team, we have an outreach and digital campaign, digital PR campaign managers. Um, we have a data analyst in our team um and you know i think we are a very and, and in my own sort of squad i set myself i have more of a content squad so it means that it frees me up to be more strategic and then go away and solve all those problems and talk about in terms of like getting things done um and working on all the different projects that you need to work on while my team might be able to go and sort of deal with those seasonal campaigns on a day-to-day um so in terms of how we're set up now, I don't actually think I would change much. Um, okay. So it, I, I think there's, there's, it's a great setup. Um, I think, you know, in, in many ways, yeah, we could, you know, you, you, we've got, you know, quite a lot of people in the team delivering a fair amount of work, but that obviously you're always going to have vacancies. So, you know, we're always going to have someone's leave left and then someone's on a notice period and, you know, you're never a full, full team. So, you know, especially mm-hmm. when you're something, a team of that size. So you do have to obviously have that additional, like people to kind of make up for it. You don't want to be overstretched because then people stop enjoying the job uh, and then people yeah. leave and good people leave and you don't, you don't then deliver the results that you need to. So that investment and in SEO is super important. I, I was just about to ask as well, how do you, attract the talent obviously you have a very well-known mm. name and stuff like that but how do you find it at the minute is it tough to find good it SEOs is, or like it was you know it, it also just depends on the time of the year that you hire in uh yeah, and you're very dependent on like the market conditions all the time because like if you hire in january everyone's like oh new year new me i want a new job uh so you get like, yeah. loads of applications and you get really good ones Obviously, there's also you know people getting made redundant, and then you get good good candidates coming in. But sometimes there'll be candidates that a lot of the time they're trying to get salaries that are just way out of what we, <laughs> the levels that we we're trying to get into. And it's not that we don't have those types of jobs; it's just the role that they're trying to apply for is just not right for that. Um, and this mm-hmm. can be can be I mean the titles in SEO can be very often confusing in themselves. So that can mean that you get a wide variety of people applying. Um, 
But generally, we, yeah, we do obviously get, you know, because of the brand recognition, we do get that. We do get a solid amount of, of, of applicants. Um, but there's always, it's always good to have more choice and to mm -hmm. have a strong pipeline. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we do struggle to sometimes hire quickly. Um, and often we've hired people and then the role hasn't kind of worked out with them. So you then that also creates additional problems, you know, for, for, for teams trying to spend time just filling a vacancy multiple times. Yeah, you know who to come to for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but did you have anything? Sorry, Shrey, just one, more, one last thing yeah. on that. Um, do you have any sort of programs in place to help retain that talent? Because I know you said, obviously, there's going to be people who are constantly on the move as they're like, the team grows and stuff. But is there any sort of programs or initiatives that maybe help retain top talent? Yeah, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> same. It's, 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 it's slightly different, I guess, in like an agency environment where you can kind of create roles for people and give people kind of all these weird titles. Um, but like we are a structured business, like we are set roles in a business. Um, and unless they restructure, um, they don't change the, that structure. So obviously your base, your, you know, growth within the career can be a little bit challenging if someone's sitting in the role. So I'm sure there's people in the role that would love me to leave so they can take the role. Or <laughs> like the role. So like, there's always, um, you know, vacancies that, you know, come up and you do try and promote your own. Um, but sometimes just people aren't ready yet um, or it's just not the right time. Um, mm. So we do still go external on, on a lot of the roles, but we do look internal a lot of the time first. Um, again, on top of that, we, dem we tend to see quite a lot of sideways shifting in time in-house because I think that's it's a great way when you get into a role, especially in in house where you've got quite a large variety of roles going on. That it's very easy for someone to start getting a lot of skills in one area and shift into a different role. So, someone from my team recently, um, an SEO manager, she um, recently moved into an ecom product management role, and she'd been a lot of her time in the role, kind of working with devs, building tickets, and delivering changes. Um, and that kind of really suited her as a role. And she did this internal uh, training program called like Idea Lab, um, where they essentially got given a budget and they had to build a product with the different people from all over the business to come up with, solve a problem. And in that process, she's learning like about UX, she's learning about like, you know, how to deliver, like hire a UX and work with a UX to look person, how to build a product, things like that. And then ultimately she's learned all those skills and then found a vacancy and another team that kind of they were like oh you'd be really good for this and then they kind of mm -hmm. uh, i guess poached her but it was a it was a awesome. decision i imagine um but yeah so i guess in, in that regard like there's definitely an opportunity to move around within the business if seo isn't your vibe forever there's definitely mm -hmm. so much more there's so many roles out there like being a product owner learning how to own mm -hmm. and work with developers in so many different ways is makes seo a great foundational role to move into so many different areas as well Mm, that's awesome and okay. as you, you sort of touched on the question I was going to ask so I was on your LinkedIn and seeing that you celebrate people that obviously progress in their career and um, someone from my team got this new role so I was just wondering within your SEO team how you celebrate your goals overall such progression or even small goals do you just have like a method of celebrating them or yeah I guess I guess it's just shouting about people in, in the business and getting that recognition is 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 great we are obviously remote first business we don't have a lot of people i work with are based all over the uk so we can't like go for drinks quite as easily as some companies would be able to or something like that um you know some of my teams in manchester some of my teams in london some of them in bristol so you know like it, we do try and grab people together and we do have social events but i guess we wouldn't do it just for like someone's got a promotion let's go out and celebrate as such um but yeah we do you know obviously we make big um, it's it's a great it's 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 super important, especially in these types of environments, to have the channels to be able to say, "Oh, this person's done a really great thing." This puts their name in front of people. It's so important that people build their own brand and and awareness within a company because you can easily go unnoticed if you just don't make a big like. You could be a great person doing great work, but if no one knows your name, then it doesn't. It, just, it can end up counting for nothing. Mm -hmm. To build off of Jay's question, um, I think with such a big company, with such big teams, and also working remotely, um, are there? Could you list maybe, I guess, three ways that you incorporate um, 
uh, managing a team like um, throughout the week. I'm, I'm working on a topic right now on team building, um, especially in a remote and hybrid um, uh, manner. And are there any sort of ways that you um, incorporate, I guess, activities or disciplines or meetings throughout the week that just emphasize yeah. the communication factor of things? So we're, we're very flexible as a business. And I think but fundamentally, you have to be able to trust people that work in your team. Um, and people, you know, if they start to not not produce the work it becomes very obvious so yeah. it's not a it, you fundamentally your job is now it's not a bums on seat role that's mm. very archaic and very backwards i think in any way <laughs> um it's a what are you delivering and are you delivering it in time and are you delivering yeah. it good quality that is what speaks yeah. volumes now and yeah. You, we manage our tasks through Jira, so we use t- okay. tickets in, even in our own team. So say it, it does require a lot of organization, um, and it does require like you know continual check-ins. So we have Jira meetings. So we would have one on a Monday to check in and say, "Hey guys, what are we working on this week? Make sure your board's updated." Uh, and then we have a check-in on a Thursday. Some people do it differently. Every manager can do what it, manage their team however they want to manage it but some people do daily sprints all that kind of stuff but um i tend to do like a two-day check-in on a monday check-in on a thursday just to say hey any blockers is everyone on track all that kind of stuff um and then we also have okrs so okrs are um objectives key results so they're kind of more structured uh deliverables to say like this is our strategic plan how are we going against that strategic plan we have another meeting middle of the week to kind of check in on that and say, ah, oh, are we, you know, do we have X number of ranking visibility on this keyword group or something like this? And what's driving that? What's not driving that? So there's like other, that's a more like results focused rather than task focused meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess it's just about sort of, you know, your, the week is made up of lots of meetings and then mm-hmm. trying to figure, fill in the hours in between with the work you've got to do. So um it's about just letting people get on with it um and sort of making sure that everyone's happy having one regular one-to-ones is super important with everyone just to check in and make sure that everyone's happy you know talk to them about their own development you know give people that feedback that they need um and that's kind of how how we do it we just have to try and structure the week you know in that way i do tend to try and do facetime with people i try to go in at least once a week into an office um so i do it's very much a voluntary um, situation, um, but I do find that that FaceTime is super valuable, especially because in this line of work, we are relationship building. So having that FaceTime with people can be super valuable for getting stuff done, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And then in terms of um, an onboarding processes, um, do you guys have um, uh, specific times and schedules or um, uh, processes in place? And you yeah, I mean, onboarding, we tend to, it can, it can vary because it really depends on what time of the year you're coming into the, to the, to the workflow um, <laughs> but, and yeah. what role. Um, yeah. But in terms of onboarding, we would, obviously, there's generally a bit of a kind of, you, right, your first day, you've got to rock up to the office, whoever your ones that are closest to you, because there's loads of offices yeah. all over the country. Okay. Collect your laptop, get set up, mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll see you online at, at midday. Um, so, um, in that, and that, and it can be slow. Like our IT systems are not as agile as they would be in, say, a startup, and that can mm. sometimes mean that you know getting set up and getting the applications you need and getting the access to things you need can take a little bit of you know can take up to a week or two at times um, mm. to get things sorted. So I guess it's a slow burn to start with, um, and then you know, tasks will come on board. You'll get introduced into what our process is. We also have a lot of templates, how we use things. So I guess it's introduced into those templates um, and then learning about who to speak to about what, putting in that FaceTime with people, having one-to-ones with everyone that you need okay. to know. Um, that's, I guess, the way we'd onboard people. Okay, awesome, perfect. Jay? Yeah, and uh, us, just on the topic of onboarding, because I'm also uh, writing up something about keeping high momentum, but at the at this moment in time, it's obviously quite difficult to, remote working to onboard someone, get to know them on a personal level without being face to face. So is there like a, some key foundational thing that you would have in order to sort of, instead of slipping into a micromanager point of view, stay in mm. as a leader, but building up rapport for new hires that come into O2? Um, do you have any 
maybe like skills oh. that you can give people listening to this? In terms of uh, how I might go about sort of building rapport with people. So. Yeah, like building the rapport with new hires because quite often people can slip into like micromanagement once mm-hmm. new hire, especially if it's online and you haven't actually seen yeah. their true I mean, potential. Yeah, it depends on your management style, I guess. But I'm much more of a hands off, coachy kind of manager where I yeah. kind of try and give people a lot of free reign over their role, um, but step in when there needs to be feedback and adjustment. Um, but I'm very much, you know, someone who. Uh, it tries to mentor people. Um, I take a lot of, I get a lot of um, satisfaction out of mentoring and, and developing people. So I I do like to kind of see people grow in the role. Um, and I look at people and try and understand where their strengths and weaknesses are to then identify and try to, one, obviously give them structure the work so that play to their strengths, but also look at like, you know, where what understand from them, what do they want to develop? Do they want to get better at data analysis? Do they want to get better at you know, relationship management, presentations, all that kind of stuff, like then you can kind of give them work that might be more structured in that way. Um, so it's more of, of that type of role. But then I would, I, I'd encourage my team to, you know, have their own one-to-ones within them where they just get to know each other and, and have fun. Like, you know, at the end of the day, work should also be somewhere you enjoy being at and enjoy working with the people you like around you. Completely mm-hmm. agree. Um, is there anything in particular, Ash, that you look for in sort of junior SEOs? Anything that really uh, you kind of know, know straight yeah, away no, that they're going to... We going tend to try and not hire people that are too junior because just because we don't have the time and resource to just, and, and the environment to, to train someone up who maybe is starting from scratch or has very little experience. Um, so we tend to try and hire people with at least a couple of years' experience um, and there's some more, more junior roles in the team. We do have our own internal apprenticeships and um, graduate roles, which obviously then fill in to that we, that we train internally. Um, but what we look for when we're hiring is, is fundamentally, obviously, some SEO knowledge. We need to know that they can come in and we're not be teaching them the basics. So that two years that they've got yeah. on TV, actually, what did they learn? What experience did they get? And understanding you know, how valuable that is um, and, and understand where their strengths are. But fundamentally, we're looking for attitude because we have to trust people. And because we have a remote first environment, we have to know that someone is going to be really hardworking and has a drive and passion for what they're doing and wants to be there and mm. you know, is going to work hard, not just in the first six weeks, but actually like a year or two from now. Yeah, definitely. That's important. Um, I think this is, this is a little bit more of a personal question for um, yourself and SEO managers alike. Um, how do you, I guess, keep yourself motivated, especially in terms of managing and res- being responsible for managing teams? Um, do you sort of find your strength and motivation within the team or um, with any SEOs around you or your close circles? Um, uh, I mean, motiva- I, I mean, I just really enjoy working SEO, like in general. So I think it helps okay. you like the job. I think, like yeah. I was saying at the beginning about my background, like when if you work in a job which you're not enjoying or you're finding a bit boring, that's mm. going to make motivation a lot harder than that's if you're true. kind of, you know, interested in what you do and you can see the fruits of your labor kind of transpire and in, in looking at the analytics and looking at the data and seeing like better performance as a result of the work you've delivered. That's always mm. quite motivating. Um, mm. And then also, yeah, seeing, seeing the team develop again, mm. I like to see that growth. Um, and yeah, I think I just find that motivating. I think I work, I'm lucky I get to work in a very flexible environment um, and being given quite a lot of free reign and autonomy over how we run the ship and how we deliver things. And I think, again, that can be very motivating. And then also just sort of personally self-developing by learning more about SEO and learning from other SEOs. Are there any SEOs that you particularly follow um, on, I guess, LinkedIn or newsletter-wise? I don't, I don't like, well, I follow obviously loads of people. Uh, <laughs> you see, like, there's like so many SEOs yeah. that do some really great work. Um, yeah. I think there's people like Oliver Sessions um, from Reboot Digital, I think. They, he's always pushing out like really great case studies. Um, mm-hmm. Anyone that's putting out case studies, I love because you okay, can see awesome. like the result of a test that's going on. Yeah. Um, Patrick Stocks at Ahrefs, great guy. Um, really interesting, knows his stuff. Um, you know, there's certain people you can 
you know, really learn from um, in the industry and they kind of, you know, you kind of think you know a lot and then you see someone that actually knows a lot and you're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and then um, there's people like Nick Wilson. He's really great. He does like edge computing. Um, I've spoken to him a couple of times and he's, yeah, he's really interesting, really nice of stuff and just does some really like, you know, unique stuff. I think it's really interesting when people are kind of, you know, breaking ground in new areas in terms of, because mm-hmm. SEO is very like, you know, there's there's certain blocks in SEO that are fundamental, but there's also lots of like things that are sort of true in certain industries and certain sort of like areas of SEO that can be tested and you won't know really about it until it's being tested. Mm, yeah, awesome. We'll definitely check them out. Um, just to quickly round off, um, you spoke at Brighton SEO recently. Is that correct? Yeah. How was it? Um, it and, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, in April, yeah. So it was uh, one of those things I just like, right, I, was, I need to like challenge myself. So I just kind of replied. I was like, this is this is topic that I really want to do. Um, I kind of changed my topic a little bit because I ended up realizing that the topic was just far too big to go into um, in a 20-minute talk. So, it, it, but yeah, no, I, I, it was a great experience. Like it pushed, it really pushes you. Um, you kind of, you know, you really have to like feel like you know your stuff to go up there and strut it. So um, I learned a lot about, you know, the, the subject that I that I chose to do. Um, and you also meet a lot of great people in the, in the, in the process. I love the sort of networking element in SEO. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, just being trial by fire, but I put up on that stage and then you just kind of have to, you know, go, hope you've practiced enough. Um, but yeah, no, it's great. It's a, it's a, for me, it was a, it was a development experience. Um, and I would probably do, yeah, I'd definitely do stuff like that again in the future, but it was quite, I found it very time consuming outside of work. So, um, it's not something I'd rush into quickly again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, okay. That's, um, it for our time. It felt like time flew at this <laughs> interview, but thank you so much for coming on yes. and chatting. Um, and yeah, it was very interesting um, getting to know you and the company a little bit better mm-hmm. and uh, your role as well at Infringe and O2 Media. Um, so thank you so much for joining and we will chat soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Have a great weekend. Bye.